The Prime Minister is off to Europe for trade talks this weekend. She'll meet with European Union leaders to progress the EU free trade agreement. Then we'll head to London to meet with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Part of the FTA negotiations includes the EU proposing to restrict the use of certain names, things like common cheese names, feta, gruyere, parmesan. For more on this, European Union Ambassador to New Zealand, Her Excellency Nina Obermeyer. Nina, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Morena. Lovely you, to be here. You are heading over with the Prime Minister's delegation to Brussels. Presumably you'll be present for those free trade agreement talks. In your assessment, these talks have been going on since 2018. What do you think is the timeline to complete them now? Yeah, this is all very exciting and I uh, really wish I could give you the precise time when this agreement will be concluded. As the Prime Minister said yesterday, there's a lot of momentum in the negotiations and we really want to get this over the line. We are very much looking forward to striking an ambitious and modern deal, in particular on, on those issues that matter most to both of us and, and to the world. And there are a number of, of points that still need to be fleshed out. I've been reading the um, the summary from the last talks that were happened that happened there with a twelfth round of negotiations in March. Now, one of the sticking points is this thing about geographic indicators. That's protecting words like feta, gruyere, parmesan. What are the compromises that need to be made here? Uh, look, this is very important to the uh, European Union. Uh, it's part of our cultural heritage. We believe that it's good for consumers and good for producers when you know exactly what it is you're getting when you um, uh, buy a product that says uh, feta. But in terms of the solutions that we're discussing here, I would uh, prefer leaving that to the negotiators at this uh, point in the negotiations. How many terms are there? I think the latest list I saw was around 2,000. Has has there been any concessions? Have some of those names come off or is that list a hard list? Um, this list is the long list um, with all the names that exist and that are registered within the European Union. But the ones that are actually used in New Zealand are, are much, much fewer. So I can reassure you we're not talking about thousands and we're not talking about hundreds of names here. Are there names that New Zealand has requested that the European Union has said, OK, well, well, we'll give you the ability to use that exclusively in New Zealand? We've issued a standing invitation for um, uh, New Zealand names to be registered. This is already the case um, for wines and spirits, for example. Uh, Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc is one of the names that is registered here in New Zealand and that we would also be very happily recognizing. Um, when it comes to food products, this is there's no re legislation currently in New Zealand. So this is one of the things that New Zealand would have to um, think about in the context of the, and of come the implementation of the negotiations. With our own list, right. How important is the emissions reduction targets in terms of sealing this agreement? Um, we're both committed uh, to have an ambitious agreement also when it comes to our climate commitments and, of course, implementing the obligations we've both undertaken in the context of the Paris Agreement is very important to, to both of us. But I don't think that we've got uh, huge um, gaps or differences here. So we very much share the objective that these uh, negotiations have to be, or this FTA has to be ambitious in terms of climate objectives. Would it be dependent on things like agricultural emissions pricing, things like the recommendations that were made in Hawaka Ekenoa? Uh, no, we are not trying to, um, to implement or to uh, impose um, emissions reductions by means of a free trade agreement. I don't think that is the right tool. What we're trying to do is to make sure that the commitments both sides have undertaken are, are complied with. There's the um, free trade agreement with the UK, of course, has seen zero tariffs on all exports. Any mm -hmm. likelihood this would happen with Europe? Uh, you're not the first one to ask me uh, that question. I, I, I strongly doubt that we will uh, be able to, mo uh, to match the UK's offer. This has been very clear and this has been made very clear right from the start. We undertook uh, scoping uh, together before we started this, uh, these negotiations. And as I'm sure um, all of your viewers will be aware, 
in particular, the area and are, of course, sensitive sectors also in the EU. Whilst we're looking to uh, achieve market opening that is mutually beneficial both for the EU and for New Zealand, full tariff liberalisation in the agricultural sector seems um, not on the cards at this point. <laughs> Seems unlikely. European Union Ambassador to yeah. New Zealand, Her Excellency Nina Obermeyer, we really appreciate your time. Thanks for being with us this morning.